So what's so special about the Agile robotic cameras? Well, um, apart from these two guys looking quite funky, I like it a lot. They are IP68 rated. I think we have had no other camera through the Skahoy shop with IP68 rating. And that means you can actually submerge this camera into water for 30 minutes and it wouldn't fail on you. IP ratings is something with um, how they can withstand an environment. So these are rocket cameras. It means you can throw dirt at them, you can submerge them into water, and they'll still work for you. They are useful in a number of different contexts. I think I've heard about these cameras being used on sailboats, so you can put them um, in such an environment where you'll risk having salty water splashed on them, and they should still just operate. Uh, I think they even have vipers. Well, I'm not going to promise you too much because my focus will be the RCP on the table right here. But other than their IP rating, their ruggedness, they are also made in a modular way. So you will find that the hardware is modular and the firmware is modular as well. For all those details, please ask the Agile uh, folks. Our job is to create a fantastic control experience when you use these cameras in uh, live production um, of various sorts. So therefore the RCP is the focus of this demonstration of the two Agile Arc um, 360 cameras. So um, this RCP is set up to work with both cameras simultaneously and you may have noticed that it's the fader version I brought today. So um, just to um, initially show you what that means. Basically that when we change camera, and that has been assigned to these buttons here, we have camera one, two, and three, we will see the iris fader is moving. So that's the significant difference from the joystick version. When you have a joystick-based RCP, the unfortunate effect of changing camera is that the joystick will now sit in a position which doesn't reflect the actual iris value on the camera. And when you move that joystick, it's likely to, to jump the iris. So uh, we solved that with the fader version. We also have an encoder version of the RCP, and both of those are great for multi-camera control. So obviously um, the iris control on the motorized fader here is one of the takeaways um, with this uh, configuration we are having here and the main thing you want to do with an RCP. Uh, so you can see on the screen we, um, we have the, the two sources from these cameras and if we look at the other functions we find on the RCP, we have a basic menu for settings. And in this menu you'll find exposure. So we are currently at the manual exposure. So you can change the shutter speed if you want. Um, I'm not sure I'm gonna, well, yeah, we, we can do that. We can do that. And you'll see the effect of the shutter speed on the selected camera, camera one. Uh, the iris value is actually redundant with the uh, motorized fader. So um, it's just reflected up here once again, and I can change that with the, um, with the encoder, and you see that the fader is actually moving along. So it's more a matter of not because redundancy is great, it really isn't, but these settings are all related. So we like to group them together in the exposure menu on the RCP when we do configurations. On these knobs, you find stuff like uh, white balancing. So there you have auto white balance, but we can choose indoor, we can choose outdoor. Um, if we zoom a little bit on this, um, let me see if we can zoom, yep. There we go. Uh, you can see clearly the effect of changing the white balance. We could do a um, a trigger here, I think if I hold, uh, there you saw the uh, white balance was adjusted. Probably not a good idea to white balance on a blue Skahoy controller, but uh, nevertheless, you saw the effect, right? If we continue to manual, um, there we have the classic uh, red and blue gain settings we can do on these encoders over here. So that's all good. I'll just, um, yeah, we have tracing white balance as well, um, and back to auto right there. So. An unusual thing about an RCP is that we can actually work the pan tilt and zoom on this one. Not that you would always do it, because um, the way I think about this is you have a PTC operator and his task is to be the cameraman, right? So he has pan and tilt under control, zoom included, but he shouldn't touch the iris if you have an RCP operator. So you may want to disable this, but it is still quite useful that from an RCP, you actually have a joystick, so you can do adjustments to the uh, camera framing. And this is why we included the joystick pad on the RCPs, uh, which is like um, a convenience joystick. It's not as precise as a Hall Effect joystick or analog joystick of any sort, but you'll see that it's quite useful. So as I'm now pressing um, this, you can see that, uh, I think we need to change the shutter speed here, right? So, um, 
yeah, let's go back to auto exposure. So um, you'll see that I can actually use this joystick even if I press it just lightly, it goes uh, at this speed. If I press it harder, it's gonna go really quick. So there's actually even some level of speed control in this, but we implemented a little button that will set the general speed of the joystick and the zoom functions. We also had zoom functions, so when I press this button, you can see I'm zooming in, I'm zooming out, and if I change the speed on this four-way button, oh, by the way, four-way buttons, you must know about that right now. So as I press the sides, you can see the speed is going up and down. If I um, set it to one, I have the, the fastest speed. The reason for that is that this is really not speed, this is speed limiting. Because by default, if you didn't implement this, you would have full speed. So setting it to one means that you have the fastest action at all. You see the zoom, you even see the pan tilt uh, operation is quite quick. If I move this to like six and I press zoom, you'll see I have a pleasant slow zoom into the picture. And likewise, if I do the pan tilt, I have actually fairly slow, um, let me see, fairly slow. And even if I go uh, further in, now I'm just gonna do this a little quicker like this, and I'll set the speed like that. I think I can do some some adjustments, framing adjustments, that would probably come across pretty nicely. You probably wanna, uh, don't want to do this on a live picture. Um, as usual, be careful with that. And with this one, we didn't design this joystick to give you that fine speed control that will allow you to, to smoothly uh, mimic the natural operation of a cameraman. But as you can probably imagine, it's really useful. Final thing is, is uh, the focus. So we have uh, auto focus turned off right now. I can, uh, it, it means that I can actually adjust the focus on this knob. And if I press the um, on push, uh, on trigger focus, on one time focus, I don't know what that label was for, but anyway, now it focused obviously, and I can also turn on auto focus so that it's, it's gonna track along as I'm moving. On the lower part of the panel, we have standard stuff that uh, includes active panel, the preview button that flips a relay inside. This is typically common for all our RCPs and the way we configure them. We have um, exposure mode auto and exposure mode iris on these buttons. Um, and uh, just again, one of the things is that when we go to camera two, and in this case, we could go to camera three, where you just see it blanks out because camera three is not present, so we're not connected you have the camera selector sitting right there. So that was the um, walkthrough of the RCP for the Agile Arc uh, 360 cameras, rugged, uh, high quality cameras for applications you have probably never imagined for robotic cameras.